Hey everyone, it's Chad and today I have a bunch of cups here that I need to refinish. I don't want to throw these out, they're perfectly good cups, but as you can see I've had a few different issues with either my laser, the rotary not holding the cup in place, or I just put the logo in the wrong place. So all of these right here are Duracoated cups and I'm going to show you how to strip these with something you probably already have at home. If not, it's a quick trip to the local hardware store. I'm not gonna strip this one, this is my coffee. So stick with me. All right, first thing, I've already torn these off. Just get yourself a couple of uh, sheets per cup, or uh, maybe just one sheet per cup. And you're gonna lay out some paper towel so I'm just gonna fold this up and essentially I'm gonna soak this paper towel in acetone and that's all you need is some acetone and I'm gonna show you how easy this is to do now it's best to do this in a well ventilated area and make sure you're wearing some safety goggles, especially if you're pouring this stuff up close like I am right now. And let's just take one of these. I'm going to take this one, Maker Central. Now the reason this particular cup was so problematic, when the rotary was made, I don't think they had these small cups in mind. So, yeah, be careful with Aston. Try to get it all soaked in. All right, then all you're gonna do is take this and you're gonna fold this over. And then you're gonna take the foil and pretend it's a baked potato. And like a baked potato, let it sit for at least 10 minutes. All right, so just one little quick thing I wanted to point out. I'm using a silicone mat as a work surface. Underneath here is a varnish table, and the last thing you want to do is cover that with acetone. So I can just wipe this up, and I don't really want to spill it out. I'd like to use every bit of that acetone, but I don't have to worry about my work surface getting messed up with this silicone mat here. And I've only found these in one place. I've looked all over. I'd love to give you a link to Amazon, but unfortunately, the only place I found this mat is at Peachtree Woodworking, uh, and they have a website, peachtreewoodworking.com. It's designed for glue ups, but I use it for resin pouring, I use it for this, and uh, of course, glue ups. So, excellent silicone mat, nice and thick, and definitely check it out if you need something like this. All right, let's uh, let's open these up and see what we got. This can actually be pretty satisfying. Sometimes you can get a a nice little hook and just kind of start peeling it off. That's pretty much how easy it is and if it's if it's any challenge to pull it off you can always put it back in for a few minutes and sometimes when you have like where it's cut out you're gonna have to just kind of rub it like that to get it off but all the rest as long as you go at it pretty quick should come off really easy All right, so I like to use the black Scotch-Brite. There's also green. I don't think it's quite as aggressive, but you can see how that's already starting to fade. And on this side, it's gonna be real easy because I didn't have as heavy of a... There you go. And if you have a, a buffing wheel, it's really quick, which is what I normally use now.
for a seam like this, you might want to use a awl or I'm using a Jimmy Duresta ice pick. Just happen to have that, but it works great at getting the uh, last bits of material out of the crease or seam. All right, now that I've got the stainless cleaned up and the powder stripped off, I'll wash these off with some Windex and they'll be ready to recoat. So that's it for today's tip. I hope you find it helpful and thanks for watching. You guys know what to do. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions on how to make this process better, I'd love to hear them down in the comments section. If there's anything that you'd like to see on the channel that I haven't been doing lately, let me know. I'd love the feedback. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this tips helpful and be watching. I'm going to do a video just following this. It should come out in about a week on how to repair your rotary so that you don't have as many of these types of mistakes. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click on the like buttons and all that jazz. You guys know what to do. Have a great day. All right, now that they're cleaned up, I'll probably just wash them off with some Windex and I'm ready to recoat them. This still did tilt up again. <clears throat> Do what now?